What's the deal with airplane peanuts? I'd like to welcome onto the podcast. Thank you so much for being able to be here virtually. Uh, you all know him and uh, love him, obviously, already. We got Josh Potter. Thank you. Thanks yes. for having me. Uh, thank you for being here. We got through our technical difficulties, and yeah, now we are. That. Oh no, I, I'm not sure. Uh, could have been on my end too. The the Zoom seems to work better than Google Meets, um, so I'll remember that going <laughs> going forward. But uh, yeah, I had to wear the Bills jersey today because we had uh, Josh on, and also it's just a good excuse. It's not. I have an OJ jersey, and I barely get to wear it. So oh, this is awesome. one of the this is one of the few times. I always wondered as a Bills fan if it's a touchy subject. No, no. I love OJ. You know, I say, you know, it's a shame what happened to Nicole and Ron, mm -hmm. but I mean, the man ran two thousand yards in our <laughs> season. So yeah, what do Heisman. You, want? you know, yeah. he's still up on our wall of fame. Actually, Juice is loose. Yeah, he's also still he still has the bust up in um in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but I didn't know he was still in the stadium. That's yeah, yeah. I'm sure. What I mean, we're supposed to get a new one in uh 2026 here coming up so yeah i'm sure his name will like be forgotten in the move i'm right I'm gonna guess that right now i'm making <laughs> just that lost call, lost along the yeah, way people love oj but if you go to the bill stadium you'll see a ton of oj jerseys that's crazy because if you think about that compared to like how how they did joe pa when all that went down taking down the stats just erasing him from history basically and well, that then, was more the institution than it was like think about what happened when they did do that the when they fired him there was like riots as if george floyd was murdered it was <laughs> that's crazy true. you know what i mean that's so true. <laughs> it was like bananas so i yeah, mean that's that was... the way that's kind of how bills fans are we're like you know it's a shame he murdered those people but you know he's still a yeah best Buffalo <laughs> of all time maybe. that's true that's the white person's george floyd is, is joe <laughs> yeah, paterno's yeah. statue being removed <laughs> So, uh, best Buffalo Bill of all time. How do you feel about the future? Obviously, you got Josh Allen uh, with the reins now. Um, how did, it's got to be a good time to be a Bills fan. Oh yeah, I love it. It's uh, it's better than ever. I mean, people were asking me, you know, was I sad when we lost to the Chiefs or whatever? And I, I was obviously. I was like upset that we lost, but it's all this is like cherry on top. Like from the years that I was thirteen until i was 32 we didn't mm -hmm. make the playoffs so yeah. it was like yeah. this was this is all bonus stuff you yeah know? the fact that we're in the mixes still feels good to me you know what i mean that's how i feel because i'm actually i'm a Bengals fan and oh, okay. so i had no expectations nothing no anything for this this season um you know we just got done tanking like i had no expectations so then the fact that they even made the playoffs me and my dad and my brother we were all so excited about and then like they keep winning and they keep winning. obviously it's exciting but then it's like how do you feel after they lost the super bowl and it's like i barely even just got over the fact that they made it to the super bowl yeah, like it was just like that we were there That's yeah like I mean, yeah, especially the, I mean, the Bengals just had the number one overall pick like two years ago. It's crazy yeah. that they are in the Super Bowl. And I, I, it made me think like all the years the Bills missed the Super Bowl, we weren't like epically bad. There was like a couple times we'd be in the top five for draft picks, but for the most part, it was like nine and seven, eight and eight. Right. You know, uh, that can kill a franchise kind of. Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't make you go this way or this way. Yeah. It's just kind of like if you just stay in here because you can't get a like impactful can't get, draft pick. Right then you're fucked you know so but also it's hard to see your team just tank like i i the year that they were going after burrow and it was obvious so it's like okay i'm happy that they're gonna get joe burrow i'm obvious i'm also an ohio state guy so it's like all right i like joe burrow i i like that they're going but it's like this sucks like every sunday i'm just like i don't even, i don't even have anything to watch like oh you get, sure you know so i those eight and eight seasons at least it's like okay my guys are trying like they're you know that they're giving it your all because watching a tanking team it's it's brutal but who was the quarterback during the tanking time was it uh Allen or whatever the other Allen. Uh, they had yeah they had they like dalton started the first year or first game and then they like pulled him and and rotated a few guys it was um his last name was Allen something, and then it was yeah. Um, it wasn't the one that was like there was there's like three Allens floating around now. Obviously not Josh Allen. But yeah, it was some like skinny like white guy that could kind yeah. of run a little bit, but like he <laughs> yeah. was just out there getting clobbered like by yeah, still exactly. the worst O line in the league, and 
<laughs> Even this season, I thought you had the worst O line in the league, and here, and then you make the Super Bowl, so you're like, all right, well. Oh yeah, shit. well, you get sacked eleven times in Tennessee and still win that game. That is <laughs> yeah, the worst O line in the league. So would you that? But that game, I would say, uh, that playoff game against the Chiefs, I think that's the best football game I've ever watched maybe besides the other chiefs game against the rams i think it was a monday night it was a primetime game like three three I years ago or so. yeah the 50 yeah. burgers yeah, yeah that was for crazy me, i mean i had i was it was too i had too much skin in the game to like recognize that also yeah. in that moment i was watching it i had a show that night in milwaukee and i was watching it uh in the green room and then the fourth quarter started when I had to go on stage and I mm -hmm. made them put the screen down behind me and like play the game. Yeah. And I just did like commentating of the game for like an hour <laughs> plus until the That's game. That's kind of awesome, so the, actually. The audience, like, well, I put it up on my Patreon, like the whole thing, like the yeah. audience had to watch the game with me. And they, and they, you know, to their credit, were like getting into it because it was such a great game. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, like in that season, it's kind of the same thing because I didn't have any skin in the game. It was that game between the Chargers and the Raiders, like week 18. If they tied, they both would have made the playoffs. Oh, yeah, yeah. That game, just because about... it almost tied, like yeah. it was at the end of it overtime. Went to overtime. Yeah, and it was almost over. I thought that was, I wish it tied. It would have made it yeah. even more perfect. But that was the most like, because I had no real skin in the game. I just was kind of rooting for the tie. Right. That was the most exciting football game I've ever watched. <laughs> the most exciting game ever is rooting for a tie, rooting for bad <laughs> yeah. football, basically. That's crazy because they admitted that there was like a mic'd up conversation and, and there was someone that said, yeah, we were going to, we were going to take the Well, yeah, they, before. because they, it would help both of them. It was Joe Herbert had to like take the knee and he didn't they they did a running play and so i think they like lost some yards or something it took them out of field goal range or something like that and yeah it was a wacky basically it came down yeah then they just did they ran a, a stupid play where it was like what are you doing just take yeah. the knee um, i remember that gave them the ball back yeah everyone was saying like they should bet for an exact tie or bet to go, go to overtime or like because those those odds are so crazy on that and oh sure usually you don't think that the teams are like aware of these weird trends that all the fans are talking about, but it's, Oh, it's, they knew. I mean, and yeah. they, and, and they knew very heartily probably because the NFL was like, really like there was even press conference stuff beforehand where they were like, we're not going for a tie. We're not going like, to yeah. go for a tie. Cause what's stopping both teams from being like, let's just make it zero, zero. And, yeah. And it helps game. both of us technically. Yeah, exactly. And that's not really, I don't think that's, I mean, the NFL is probably, that's a bad product. It'd be super boring. Yeah. And it seems like kind well, of, yeah, that's the thing. The NFL wants competitiveness. They yeah. don't want anyone to like fuck up on purpose just for the sake of, you know, the but tie or whatever. Technically, I don't know what would be wrong with that. Like, I, neither do I. Both, I mean, if it's what you want. Yeah, exactly. I remember that, but that, that Chiefs, that playoff game, it was exciting for me besides just seeing all the, you know, great quarterbacks, high flying action. I had a parlay in place a eight game parlay and it was oh like shit five bucks to win like close to 800 i think and yeah. obviously i never hit these they're eight gamers i suck at gambling but you got to go for the big parlay and the last piece was the over in that game and it oh. looked terrible for like the first the half yeah at the first half going into the second half i was watching it with my roommates i was like well it's done you know because we were it's the last leg we're all watching for this and it's the nfl playoffs obviously and then I'm complaining. I'm like, it's done, whatever. I can't believe I lost complaint. And then <laughs> two minutes left, they doubled the score. Like, oh, yeah, that, yeah. It went crazy all of a sudden. Crazy. It was just touchdown, like after touchdown, after touchdown. That's the thing I love about the over is it's never really dead, <laughs> especially yeah. in football. Yeah, it, it's it's just so like it, you just feel like you're clenching the whole time. Trying I think to I had the over two that day, but I was – you know, I had the bills, obviously I parlayed it with the bills to win. Yeah. So they lost and that fucked mm. it up, but I would have won a bunch of money myself on that. If the bills, yeah. I bet the bills like every game, like an idiot, I'm, I'm a heart gambler and I bet Oh, geez. <laughs> always with my heart. It's bad. That's why yeah. I like baseball because I really have no like true fandom. I just like, every, I like players and stories yeah. and stuff. So I just like baseball. I like all the teams. People are like, what's your favorite team i'm like i've got 30 of them i love I right love them that all. makes sense yeah do you have a favorite do you have a favorite uh bet in baseball a favorite uh like a batter 
Uh, no, like like a favorite like uh, line to bet. Like I like to do no runs first inning sometimes. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah. I, I I like doing that sometimes too. But then it's like so shot when it's. I like the whole game. So yeah, you know, I'll, I I do parlays. You know, I'll, I try to do like um like right now I did a three game parlay of the morning games. I do it based off like the the slates of games. Right. Like so, there's like three morning games. I'll bet a parlay with all three of them, and um, I like doing that. And I like just like. Like on days like where I'm stuck at home or I'm laid up or whatever, I love watching baseball all day. So I'll just do three-way parlays or sometimes just two, you know, but I'll, yeah. sometimes I'll do three so just to keep it spicy. That, that That's a good way to... I like those big numbers, like too. you said. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's because it like there's no stake in this game. There are a bunch of random teams, but now there is because you got a little skin in the game. Right. Yeah. So, no. And yeah. I just love watching baseball. So yeah. I will bet on like almost every game <laughs> that I yeah. watch. What do you think that baseball baseball's kind of been declining? I feel like in the in the public eye, like especially my generation. I obviously everyone grows up sure. playing T-ball, baseball, and stuff. And then it felt like for me, as soon as I was done playing it myself, I just lost a lot of interest um in the mlb i feel like the the highlights that like they have a strict thing about like releasing their highlights on social media like like yeah, they've lacked that a little bit i feel um and they're they're not doing themselves any favors that for, that's for sure but there is like a group of young awesome players that are like so fun that i feel like we'll get kids back into it again you know what i mean yeah. like there's just fun players right now. It's like Fernando Tatis Jr. and like right. Francisco Lindor. Like, there's just ex- Tim Anderson. There's like exciting people that are coming up now. Yeah, and I think it's like not like gonna come back. I mean, I don't know what it's down from. I've only gotten into it in recent years. I feel like it was down post steroid era a little bit more than it is even now. Like, I feel like they're kind of in an incline, even though it's slow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, like, I feel like right after the steroids thing, people were just like, fuck this. Yeah. And I fucking love the steroids. I say, bring them back. But, I say, bring them know. back too. It's way more yeah. entertaining. Let's I, get some steroids going and let them in the hall of fame. That's for sure. Well, what do you think? Oh, so you're a, you're a, you're a gambler. What do you think about uh, Pete Rose? What do you think about? Oh, he should be in the hall of fame. Fucking. Um, at least as a player, like <laughs> at least as a, as a hitter. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, who was the NFL player that just got suspended for? Oh, Calvin Ridley. He yeah, shouldn't Calvin be Ridley. suspended. No. He wasn't even playing. He was like sidelined. People are like insider knowledge. Who cares? I, I love yeah. insider knowledge. Like that's the whole point. And um, and the insider knowledge isn't even that crazy. Like the, everyone yeah, knows you're trying to win the game. It's not like he can like be like, we're going to try to win extra hard this week. Like you're trying to win right. every game. Yeah. And he doesn't get like secret reports that we don't get or something. Yeah. Maybe he gets to like, he has a friend on the one team that's like, Oh, I have the flu today and I'm not feeling great. Yeah. Maybe that's something. I don't know. But, but he said regardless, he if that's the Falcons too. So it's like, that's the same thing with Pete Rose. He wasn't ever betting against himself. He was yeah. betting on him. Like he was betting on himself, which I, I think like that makes it look like he has even more skin in the game yeah. to get the win, you know? The only thing, and I am I'm on Pete Rose's side, but the only thing that I've heard brought against that is that sometimes he wouldn't bet, he didn't bet every single game. So some you could make the case that the game <laughs> he might be like like using his whole bullpen or like like almost fucking up the next game after that that he wouldn't bet on. Like he's just going all out. That's in funny. One game, but. I don't care. I, I yeah, would hope my that's, that's, that's pretty, game. It's just funny. Yeah. yeah some games awesome. he's like, they're like, it also goes like, if I'm a player on the team, I'm like, you didn't bet today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. really, you don't really have any faith in us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Then there's some games where he's put in six different pitchers. He's obviously more invested. <laughs> it's like, all right, Pete, I feel like you might have some money on this. Yeah. One. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's great. <laughs> I like that. Well, I, I guess maybe we should get into some uh, comedy <laughs> content here. Talk a little cool, yeah, sure. uh, stand up. Um, one of the main, I mean, on this show, we, we get to talk to some really funny people that have, have done a lot, um, in their careers, different places. And you, you've seen to have been able to carve out a lot of, um, notoriety in the podcast game, as well as to your stand up uh, guest appearances, uh, your own show. Um, so how has that been, you know, because podcasting is, is a new thing relatively to the world, seeing this whole thing kind of start how it come up, how's, how it's changed, how it's still changing. You know, now we have podcast beefs going on. Like, how is it, how has it been to like, see this whole thing kind of start from, from scratch? 
Honestly, it's like, it just seems like it's, I never thought it would be something like this where it was podcasts. I, I got into radio, like at a really young age and I grew up listening to them all. So I'd listen to like Stern or Opie and Anthony or like Don and Mike and things like that. And I eventually at like 16 started working on like my local version of those shows. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that's how I was going to do comedy. I wasn't even doing stand up or anything else. I just thought that was how I was going to like have a job in doing things like making people laugh or like doing something fun. And then eventually, you know, as time went on, I realized and I watched and witnessed, you know, the downsizing of radio and like, especially in the corporate radio aspect where it was like, there's less jobs, there's automation, they're not giving as high of contracts because they're not yielding as much revenue. Mm -hmm. And eventually stand up, once I started it, it eventually started catching up income wise with radio. And, um, you know, I always, I, I, I remember telling the people in my building and in my company that I work for, like, Mm-hmm. we should be putting these shows on the internet like so other people can listen maybe people from out of town like miss buffalo or whatever and they want a little f- slice of home like we could yeah. sell ads on that like they they had no idea of the it sounded really ridiculous to them right which sounds so s- common sense now yeah looking and back, so but, yeah it was common sense then and it makes me like kind of angry that they didn't listen to me it was their own yeah. demise at the end of the day but um you know, as time went on and I eventually like found my way into the, this world, I, um, it made complete sense. You know what I'm saying? Like I was yeah. kind of, I feel like I was prepared in a way, like just in terms of like doing them, um, what to do, because I, yeah. I watch comics come in, I watch comics come in and do our radio show or whatever, sit in for an hour. And I, I remember which ones like resonated and which ones were kind of like, they didn't. Do you know right. what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. You had so, this yeah, like, like, experience that no one else really had, like podcasting to everyone else was still kind of new, but it kind of is a, a sim, or at least very similar to radio. And Yeah, so it's you, similar yeah. in the fact that you have to talk into a microphone for and be entertaining or compelling or uh, interesting enough to keep listeners as long as you possibly can and have them come back to you. Do right. you know what I mean? It's in yeah. that it's the same. And people have different styles and stuff like that. Um, in stand-up by a you know, I know a ton of people who are like amazing standups, like some of the best ever. And they, they're podcasting. They just, they're terrible. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Cause they just don't, right. uh, they just turn it on. They're like, well, today I had uh spaghetti and uh, you know, they just, they don't <laughs> yeah. have any, like they're, they're not, not they don't, trying. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, because yeah. they don't want, they're not writing jokes. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not on, it's on the fly. It's off the cuff. It's. And yeah. so, um, yeah, no, I mean, I always wanted to be on a nationally syndicated radio show. That was like my dream my whole life or whatever, to be like a Artie Lang or like a Jim Norton where I could mm-hmm. like do comedy on the weekends and be on this radio show. And, you know, podcast kind of gave me that. Yeah, even though for sure. It's not exactly the same. And I've had, I'm still having um, some like transitional growing pains from one to the other because radio it's like it happens you do a four-hour show and you do it every day mm-hmm. five days a week podcast is once a week and it's one hour so you would yeah. think that would be easier but when you're doing it so sporadically it's tough to get in the pocket and like get in right a right right yeah and then yeah. also like people have much more long-term memories where like if you do something that blows or they don't like it or whatever it lives on the internet forever Mm -hmm. and they remember it for a whole week you have to wait a whole week till you get them back Mm -hmm. whereas in radio you could just like you have another four hour show the next day you know what i mean like it took me a whole year to do as many hours of podcasting as it would take me to do like three weeks of radio if that's insane too and yeah yeah. (laughs) in a form where like practice and repetition is so helpful yeah yeah exactly that's, that's and the like sometimes like just an hour a week like in comparison to four hours a day like you can get into your groove in these longer podcasts that you list that people listen to like sometimes the funniest content the real meat of the show comes like an hour and a half two sometimes even three hours in because that's you know they're comfortable they're in they're in the rhythm of talking and and they've figured each other out the pacing and stuff and it's like just an hour then it's like all right that's done it's like that was just the tip of the iceberg now i have to wait a whole nother week 
to get another chance at this with another different person, maybe if it's not by myself and just completely start over. And like you said, if that flops, I have to have that glaring on my page for a whole week without yeah. being able to like put up another thing to either make that get lost in the shuffle or redeem myself. Um, yeah, that's, that's gotta be a whole different world, but for not only that, it's it, yeah. the thing about like doing it too, and like executing it creatively and stuff like that in radio. Sure. You have people that know who you are and they tune in and they want to listen to you mm-hmm. and they listen from beginning to end, but some people are jumping around. Some people don't even know who you are and they can just stumble across it on the dial. Cause they're yeah. just flipping through the dial and then they go, Oh, what's going on here? Like, you know what I mean? They can, yeah get latched in whether they love you or hate you right and in podcasting it's like it's deliberate it has to be like they have to click on you they start from the beginning maybe they could scroll or whatever if they give a shit but it's like there's no accidentally listening to a podcast the way there was in like a radio thing and And that used to be so many of them too that you're not going to listen to a random person speak because there's so many of them that there's going to be someone that you actually follow and know and love that you'd rather hear than trying out it's so hard to try out a new show you know like Um, my podcast is very small and it's very it's still relatively new in the grand scheme of things but it's it's very the audience is small but extraordinarily mighty mm -hmm. and every time i get like nervous that it might be too small i look at like some really big celebrities you know what i mean and they have podcasts and then i look at their numbers and i'm like oh no one cares they like yeah. them in a movie or something like that, but they don't care to listen to them speak. Do you know what right. I mean? It's, it's yeah. bananas. And and it's almost better to have like that loyal gang of people who, and exactly. that's why I think so many people love the uh, prospect of like putting all their stuff on just Patreon because it's like only my ride or dies, literally just like people willing to pay me to speak to them every month are going to hear this. So like, this is just like a great place to develop my art and just a place where everyone wants to be here. And it's great to siphon people there and find out who, who, if they really fuck with you or not, but Mm -hmm. like to grow, it's impossible to do it that way. Yeah. It just is. Unless you are, unless it's like a, a particular, like, um, shooting star of some kind, you know what I mean? Like if you, if say this person doesn't exist, but say, a comic was like just so brilliant everyone revered them and they just started yeah and they went on like rogan and never did a podcast and everyone's like obsessed chomping at the bit for more of this person then they got a patreon you know what i mean then they would that's like the only way but comedy comedy is not really set up for like something like that to, to really happen i feel like that's maybe like a exactly musician could come on the scene like that but i don't think I don't think comedy even is built for, for people to pop in that manner. Like, <laughs> right. Like not even to <clears throat> tell like his deal. I mean, I just, um, <clears throat> I'm like uh, hearing it secondhand through him telling it on podcasts, but like Tim Dillon did his podcast for years on gas digital mm-hmm. for like no money in a very smaller audience. And then, you know, he had a few appearances on Rogan. He had some clips go viral. Things started spreading yeah. Uh, and now he can have a patron that makes him a bazillion dollars. Like yeah. that won't the happen. Biggest patron in the world, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, but probably. Um, I think it is. It's like close to like a quarter of a million dollars a month. Because that's he, crazy. He puts it publicly too, which is pretty badass. That's like, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I just meant I don't know if it was the biggest. I I didn't know if there was oh, yeah, any. Yeah. I didn't know. I mean, how many people are making that much money on it? But um, you can't make that number without starting somewhere and building a wake of people in terms of an audience before you create that you know what i mean exactly yeah that makes complete sense so um you've mentioned like like some comedians are brilliant on stage maybe not transitioning to podcasting or not having the the product that you might expect them to um and then also writing jokes on on the podcast do you think that it's more beneficial not for the um, consumer, not for the audience, what they think is better, but for the comedian, for you to be doing a podcast by yourself, trying to work out jokes or bringing on other comedians, other friends and doing a uh, guest conversation. But- I like a little bit of both, but I do. There are certain people, I'll say, who 
trigger things in my brain that make me think of things that I wouldn't have come up with if I was just talking to myself. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, I do do solo episodes and, um, and I just made this revelation. We had some like reason why my producer couldn't have her microphone on and all my former producers, by the way, had all their microphones on. And the reason was like noise. She was like worried about the noise in the room. Cause I kept wondering, I'm like, is she just like, uh, shy or a stage mm-hmm. fright or something like that maybe she doesn't want to be on microphone so i asked yeah. her and she was like no it's just the noise in the room and so i'm like well turn it on because every producer i've had before has it's been like a conversation or at least like right. when i'm not making a point or need to like bounce a thought off somebody i enjoy doing that because it gives me a breath to think and then it also like they could say something that makes my makes me turn my direction and that was always the great thing like in radio too was like you'd have a room of guys it'd be you yeah. and like two other dudes or three other dudes and you're all trying to make jokes and yeah. it's it's the most fun and i mean those shows still exist i mean your mom's house has that element and um, right that's like one of my favorite Christine things about flagrant too because uh right there's a bunch have, of dudes in a yeah. room legion of skanks same yeah. thing you know that's why doing a solo podcast is like tough and i didn't i didn't set out set out doing podcasts to do that but it was out of contrition do you know what i'm saying like right um and also i want i didn't really like know what i wanted to do at first to be quite honest like when i was presented with the opportunity to do it on the your mom's house channel i I just wanted to do like a radio show and that's kind of, kind of what yeah. I feel like I'm doing like weird stuff, but the, there's less other stuff around it. So, I mean, it, and it's only an hour, so you don't need all that other bells and whistles and things like that. But essentially that's what I'm doing is like, what you would hear on like a radio show, like w- instead of doing like local news and sports or whatever, I'm doing like weird shit that are yeah. about the news and sports. So it's like, that's just kind of what I started um, it's, it's your lane doing, kind of. but i would love to have a group of people do you know what i'm right. saying like eventually i would grow to that but it, it has to happen organically it's not something and you can always tell when it's forced there's a cu- couple podcasts out there i feel like without naming any names that are just like s- clumped together uh people because they're like well you do this much people i do this mm-hmm. much people so let's just get together and do one yeah there's really no like chemistry or organic reason for it. Yeah. Then half the audience you're like, all right. And here's this new guy. And then the other half. Right. Exactly. You're like, yeah, maybe if, you know, build it up with some guest appearances, like if we were asking for this. Yeah. I, I, that totally makes sense. Um, You're talking about your experience in radio and that reminded me of one of the questions. Like I uh, talked to you before this, we put a uh, page in our community section. Oh yeah. 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 Questions to ask Josh Parr on the podcast and someone this is a this is a pretty interesting question here from Mr. Sparky 13. Uh, as an ex radio guy, what would the top three worst giveaway competitions that ended tragically be? Um, and if you don't have three, obviously that's I don't know fine. that many that ended tragically. I only know the, know of the famous one that ended all of those. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't believe. Let's take least... out tragic out of the word. What's the top three? Um, well, I mean, I have my famous couple that are just like uh, brutal. Like I, I, um, well, one was like we had, and this is so crazy that I did this on the radio. There was a woman's body that was found in the river, like the torso, <laughs> okay. and there was no head. And so divers were like, you know, for days looking for the head of the woman, mm-hmm. and. Um, there was like this little part of the river where it was like a little offshoot. People would like, I don't even really know what it was for, but it was like a little bit of a cutoff of the river. So like you weren't in the current of the river, but you were still in the water next to it. Okay. And it was like a little bit of a wall there. And uh, I took that area. I put Barbie doll parts inside of the, that, and they were all floating. And I put one head in there and I said, if you find the head, you win the, the prize. I don't even remember what the prize was, but people were all swimming around, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the guys was like, I don't know if I can make it back over. And it was just me. We don't have like lifeguards. We don't have like, it's like me and like another dude that like drove the Hummer or the van or whatever out. Yeah. And, um, or like the engineer is there. Who's like, got make sure, make sure we're on the air. 
but none of us are like lifeguards or anything. Yeah. So I was like, well, he's like, I don't know if I can make it. I'm like, well, you're going to have to. <laughs> That's all I, I was like, I don't know. There's what to no tell other you. option. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, we made all these people, people sign waivers and shit like that. But at the end of the day, like, I love that. Pieces while... of, these little pieces of paper don't mean shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? While there's a, a real search and rescue going on. In like I almost created Navy another one. River. Yeah. yeah, there's there's another guy <laughs> flailing for his life trying to find a I did say that. I said I feel kind of safe about it though, because if he didn't get swept up in the current, they would have just got him, you know, a couple <laughs> miles down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he would have been fine. <laughs> it would have been easy to find. That would have yeah. been maybe good for morale for the <laughs> did they ever find the head, the real head? I don't remember. Oh, I think they did. Yeah, they found the real head eventually. Oh, that's cool. um <laughs> I think so. I don't really remember. But uh yeah, I mean that's one, and then of course there's that story. We used to do that too. Like, it that's just a hacky radio bit. The one that the woman died in. She was doing we for they, they called it we for we, which I think is a great name. And if that woman didn't die, you bet your fucking ass that would have been done in every station from Seattle to fucking <laughs> Orlando, Florida, and uh, every consultant would have been pumping that up your ass. But uh, we for we is what they called it. We called it don't break the seal. And we did it with coffee. And we yeah. used the we used the coffee sponsor, Tim Hortons, like who gave us all the coffee. Yeah. And like as long as we said their name a bunch of times. But but I don't know, maybe you can't drown. So what exactly in is coffee. the challenge? Just, just well, oh, I'm sorry. We for so we for we was water, not coffee. Mm -hmm. So it was like they had to drink water throughout the morning. And the first person to piss lose like you're out if you piss basically so the last person okay. to not piss coffee is way better for that though because coffee does the same thing as alcohol where it like blocks off the thing in your brain and it just makes you have to have to pee so bad like i don't i don't mean i don't know i'm just I, all i i didn't even know this was possible until it happened but with the water the a woman drowned herself essentially or whatever like you mm. can drink too much water and then just drown the inside and then just you. like die i don't i really don't know yeah. the science behind what you just die <laughs> you but this, crazy. you're but like, like yeah you can, water right it and was then, like when we all learned every human person learned you can drink too much water well that was a good service then i guess i guess, <laughs> I guess that too a, that's why i was like i don't know if i was like maybe we were safer with coffee like maybe you can't do that with coffee like coffee's like a diuretic yeah. or something so like also coffee has just so much like more of a punishment to have to drink that much let alone like even if you didn't just have to start shitting yourself or whatever, just like how antsy and by anxious you get by just being in a coffee drinking competition, like by the yeah. end of the day, just like fucking wired, dude. That's oh yeah, so that's. Much more I feel like yeah, you'll either you either puke or piss like quicker with coffee than water, you know. But yeah. so yeah, she got like it's like water poisoning or some shit. I don't even really know. <laughs> water like poisoning. yeah, you it, apparently it's something that can happen. Mm. Um. And that put a stop to like all of those fucking contests. I a mean, I was physical contests. Well, just no, just listeners. And I mean, uh, and then also the, the the decline in radio, because I remember like our show, maybe it was the time slot thing, too. But like mm -hmm. our show was in the afternoon for a while and tons of people would show up and do contests. And then when we went to the morning in the later years, people weren't doing the contests anymore, even if it was yeah. like something simple. So I don't know if that was just like the listenership declining, like in terms of people weren't consuming radio anymore as much, let alone calling into it. And people yeah. had fucking Twitter and Instagram and shit. So they weren't, uh, you know, using their phone to call up a radio station for a contest. Yeah. Like even like caller, like 13 got to be hard. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like you'd, be, right. you'd get like four, you'd be like the same guy would be like six numbers. Keep doing it over <laughs> yeah. and over. I wonder yeah, if yeah. there's anything like that because that seems like so fun for the audience to do. Like it, seem, it seems so much yeah, fun there, for everyone there, to be it's, It sucks because in. like, uh, I mean, there's Twitch and there's live streaming services and things like that, but nobody's really been able to kind of make the immediacy that it is radio. Do you know what I mean? I don't know right. how to describe it. It's like, people calling in with hot takes right away like i'm sure there are things like it but here's the thing no one and just like i said before everyone's actively finding it no one's passively stumbling upon it and then calling up and being like what the fuck yeah. are you doing or whatever yeah. you know what i mean so you're missing that element which yeah. when that would happen you put those people on the radio and they would piss and moan or whatever and 
uh, call you all kinds of names and stuff. And then the people that like you were like, that was awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. There's that kind of like, that doesn't happen. There's new versions of that. There's like, Oh, so-and-so on Reddit's talking shit or whatever the fuck I, you know what? I don't know. Like that's what the, you were talking about the podcast beefs or whatever. I feel like that's the new like radio wars, you know what I mean? Like, those things and, always existed. It's always it's 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 just funny that it's happening now. Yeah, but everything's after the fact now. I feel like because it's like commenting on a podcast that already came out. Like you you stumble across it and you, and you comment, but that's already ha- that was recorded a week ago. Or it's like, hey, you said this, and but like right. radio gives you that immediate, immediate like someone's calling right. and people are listening live, and like podcasting yes. is all after the fact. Right, and that's the thing. Like, no, how many people? And then once it was done, it was done. That's the yeah. thing. Unless you like put it in a promo, or sometimes you know when you, the host would go on vacation, you'd play best of, mm-hmm. and then people would hear it for the. They'd be like, "Oh yeah," but they probably you never know, heard it before, or, or if they did, they just or if it. they did, they remembered it. Yeah, because yeah. that's the thing. Like people would hear it live, and it's amazing that anything resonated. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because While they're it, driving a car, and yeah, yeah, listening for whatever. twenty minutes at a time. Yeah, that's the, the other thing that you were show. saying about like no one just accidentally finds a podcast, but you can with radio, like just flipping through stations, you find you just hear what topic they're talking about and you have no idea who the people are, but it's like, all right, right. I, I just want to hear this. But that is so impossible to do now with podcasting, yeah, like exactly imagine just like shuffling through a bunch of random. That used to be half the fun to me. And that's what's something I'm trying to figure out, like, what's the new? Because I used to love, I mean, if you're saying something and it gets somebody who just the same scenario you just said where they're stumbling upon it and then listening to a topic that they're like, huh. And they don't know anything about you. Mm -hmm. And they hear you say something so wild that they're like, what the fuck is this? They don't know what it is. A a funny show. They don't know if it's a serious show. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't know what they're, they're listening to. So that was fun when the, that was like the, it's not like dangerous or anything, but it was like, kind of like just like exciting part it's just like it. real life like anything yeah, can happen. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly. yeah it feels more real hey guys hopefully you're enjoying this episode with josh potter so far just want to take 30 seconds to talk to you real quick about atlas vpn and a special they're running right now a virtual private network makes all of your internet traffic travel through one encrypted tunnel this way it protects you from spying public wi-fi dangers and hides your ip address as well as all your online activities besides just being smart and protecting your data on the internet you can do a ton of cool shit with vpns too like change your location to different countries or servers you can watch different shows on netflix Like if you pretend to be in the UK on your VPN, you can watch Rick and Morty in the United States. That's pretty cool. And you're probably like, oh, this sounds dope, but I don't want to do this right now. I just want to watch more Josh Potter on the Joke World podcast. And trust me, I do too. But this is kind of urgent because Atlas VPN is running its biggest deal ever. Right now you can get three years of Atlas VPN for just $139 a month. $139 a month is basically free to protect yourself from the whole internet. We're back after the Zoom pause uh, with Josh Potter. We've been talking some sports, comedy, uh, podcasting versus radio, um, and reading some some questions from you guys as well. Uh, another question that was sent in was, my question to Josh is, does the impending full blindness perpetually take up space in your brain? Like, do you think about it a lot? The thought yes. of it <laughs> makes my anxiety. And then they said the thought of it makes their anxiety uh, go up. No. Yeah, I do. I try not to. I mean, cause it does make my anxiety go up and I'm, I do like therapy and shit like that. So, uh, well, you're lady, welcome then I guess for bringing it up. I'm sorry. About oh that. no, that's all right. I don't <laughs> care. That lady, she, uh, taught me how to like not think about it. I mean, here's the thing. I only think about it. This is so weird. Like I never used to really give a shit cause it was like, my life wasn't awesome. Like I was doing all the things that I wanted to do, but I was poor and like, uh, just get just getting by and then didn't know like where the next step was or whatever like that Mm -hmm. so i was like if i go blind great then i'll get like a check from the government and i'll go to a home or something i don't know you know yeah and then so i'm like whatever (laughs) and uh but now that like things are going good i'm like oh my god i don't want to go blind you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. so that's the only like that's why i've been thinking about it more but um yeah yeah I don't know. <laughs> That's, but yeah, I guess, but yes, I guess is <laughs> the, the answer is yes. That is yeah. Uh so are um are you out in California right now? Yeah, I live in Los Angeles. All right. Then that's been kind of like hit or miss, I feel like, since in the last two, three years with their comedy scene, with their open shows, with 
how is that going? Like is, is stage time back to normal? Oh, everything's Something back to, there? yeah, everything's back to normal. Um, everything's open shows are happening more than ever. I mean, some places didn't make it to the other side, but you know, new places have sprung up and yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything's full bore here. I mean, did it take maybe longer than other places? Probably, but uh, you know, I don't know. It didn't, uh, I just did the road, you know, and I guess I feel right. bad for the comics who didn't have that outlet, but uh, yeah, other, you know, I mean, I don't, it's have. to be quite honest, like, I mean, without COVID, I've only really lived in, I've, I've, I'm coming up in the fall on my fifth year. Mm -hmm. So in like six months, but two and a half of them or whatever were like COVID years. So it's like, yeah. I was just getting kind of my foothold in um, the scene, if you will, but, right. you know, doing the road constantly, it makes it a little tough to like, where were you at before, before that? Just Buffalo. Okay. So so that was like the first um was that like the step out of like i'm becoming like full professional like going to yeah it was LA. like uh so like in 2017 tom had started doing like a theater tours and he was like um you know he goes i'll give you my tour if you um move to la and i was oh, like wow. well, all right so I wonder if, I say, if i say no to that i'm saying no to doing comedy essentially and i knew yeah. i could like make enough there was no promises beyond that year so it was like whatever i have from the end of the summer with full-on gigs all the way through to like the new year mm -hmm. and um then i can you know find a job it's enough money to like get a place or whatever so i took him up on that and you know i was on the road for that first whatever however many six months or so yeah and uh then i had to get a job and so i was starting to you know i'm still doing open mics here but nobody really knows who i am and i didn't expect them to mm -hmm. and uh you know now it's only like since right before covid and since covid has ended that i've been like just starting to like hang out at the comedy store more regularly where i like know the people that work there right, i know okay. i've met other comics that like we know who each other are or whatever yeah. but like we never really hung you know so i'm starting yeah. to like just yeah. start doing it's it's almost like it would have happened becoming like a staple three in, in years ago yeah but it's right. like not even a state not even that but just like being around like i never was going to the comedy store when i first moved here like I, uh, I just, I was in my place. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't yeah, right. That makes sense. And now I have like friends who are like, come hang out. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like, like now you're a peer at the comedy store. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm, I'm not past there and I'm not a peer there. I don't get to perform there as often as I would like, or, um, but they're giving me, I mean, and I don't deserve, I mean, like where did I just can't just started coming around. So it's like, yeah. Okay. Even though, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, even though I've been doing comedy, it doesn't matter. Like th as far as that place is concerned, like I just started showing up. I, so it's like someday, but I'm not like in any sweat, but I mean, I'm allowed to like hang out there. Like people are nice to me mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, they know sense. who I am and that kind of thing. Like yeah. I go there and I'll say hello to this person or that person. They know my name or whatever right that's but not just like who's this guy but that's back here and right 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 yeah. right 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 so was it sad leaving uh buffalo like that scene that comedy scene there i mean it sounds like an awful yeah i mean refuse from time. it was sad in that i miss my family and my friends and like i miss buffalo mm -hmm. but it wasn't sad about leaving the scene i couldn't care less about the scenes right i never was like there was always this like we're a scene or whatever i'm like this, this is a fucking solo sport you know what i mean it's not that I, I i have my friends in it and i like would get hook people that are my friends in it that i thought were like trying at least gigs mm -hmm. and if that's a scene so be it but I, I never had this like camaraderie of like we're the buffalo comics right. you know what I mean? yeah, like, yeah i don't yeah, fucking yeah. give a shit yeah yeah <laughs> So, but before the, the offer to uh, go on the tour, if you, if you moved to LA, was that some of your first um, contact or with Tom Segura or how did that relationship kind of start? I'm sure. A no, I worked with him for like five years, almost before that, like okay, here and there. And it, I mean, since he was doing like, it used to be like, he would get me the gigs, but I'd have to like drive myself or fly myself there or like mm -hmm. put myself up or. I don't know if I've ever had to put myself up. Usually he'd make sure the 
club had a condo at least or something, you know, like, or the club would put me up or right. something, you know, I don't think I've ever had to put myself up, but I'd have to get myself there. And then I remember one day he like went from the, all of a sudden the club started getting like full and I'm like, this is crazy, man. You know, I never really listened to your mom's house. I started to like, after I'd hang out with them a little more and um, like, yeah, the club started filling up. Then he went to theaters and then he went to like, now he's on outer space. I mean, it's crazy. It's yeah. Like, yeah. He's coming everywhere. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, it's fucking now his tours are unreal, but I mean like, yeah, it used to be like, I'd have to, not because he didn't want to, or wasn't generous, but it's just the name of the game. Like the, that's the gigs. If he were buying my plane ticket, he wouldn't have made any money on the gig. You know what I right. mean? So Yeah, of course. How is um, traveling the country, I feel like, in a comedy setting seems so fun because you get to, you know, you have free time maybe during the day uh, in all these different cities, like, around the country. It just seems like everyone talks about traveling the country, this and that, whatever. It seems like it'd be the most fun to do it as a touring comedian because you're also, like, making commentary on each city and, like, learning about the people. Um, yeah, I mean, I well, I mean, I don't go do, like, research and make jokes. I mean, sometimes <laughs> yeah. if they strike me, but I hate doing, like, I don't, I don't try to like go like, uh, you know, I don't know yeah. the local fair, but um, I, you know, I love that. That's like one of my favorite parts. And I'm trying to like get better about like going out and exploring different things. Or maybe I like stay a couple, maybe a day or two extra because like, honestly, when there's shows that night, it's like, I don't, I can't go do anything. If I go do something, I'll be exhausted and I'll right. want to like fucking, I won't, I'll be like sleepwalking through the entire show and I hate that feeling. So it's like, mm. honestly, the most, some days I'll just sleep the entire day until the show, or maybe I'll go out and get like lunch or go for a walk or something like that. But I'm mm. not like, I don't typically I've been to, it takes usually like four times for me to go to a city to see something. That's like the thing yeah. there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like now that I'm doing one nighters and st- like before when you're like middling or whatever, you're opening for one of the people they put in the weekend. So it's like Thursday through Sunday or sometimes even like longer than that, like Wednesday through Sunday. But no, I mean, like when I headline, I'd rather just do like the one nighter thing. If I'm not going to sell a bazillion tickets I'd rather just sell out like one or two shows on a night and then I'll stay like, like, I mean, I was supposed to do um, Philadelphia on June 2nd, but they had to move my date to August 25th, Mm -hmm. but I'm still going to go because I set up like a whole weekend of stuff to do. And I've been to Philadelphia like (laughs) four times and I, I bought tickets to like a Phillies game. Yeah. There's like a friend I want to see. So it's like, I'm just going to go spend a weekend in Philly regardless. But if I had that one show, it would have just taken up one of the days. Right. Right. You totally. know? that makes yeah. that makes a lot of sense it, it's almost like when you know that you have something to do also like everything you do before that during the day seems like yeah, that's still in the back of your head like I, it's not as comfortable exploring a city when you're like all right now at six o'clock i gotta be back to entertain a few hundred people like yeah i need like a nap right before or just to sleep the whole time or like like i'll like i said i'll wake up in the morning i'll go for a walk i'll do something like that but any like sort of exertion of energy just yeah. even mentally it just drains me so it's like it like i'll go for like i'll go get high and like maybe get like a coffee or something you know what i mean like i'll right. do little knickknacky things but i'm not going yeah. to like the statue of liberty or, yeah. you know what i'm saying or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. That makes is there any um is there any club that stands out to you as like um a premier club on the road, maybe not somewhere in LA or Buffalo, but like oh, out, sure. out there in the country. I don't that... know. I don't I mean like I am I know more about those ones than I know about um, here in LA. I mean, in terms of reps and performing at them, I've been to most of them now and um, various levels of my career. So I could definitely spout out a couple. I mean, Denver comedy works is unbelievable. I've never headlined it yet, but I, and I was supposed to during COVID, but I haven't gotten that uh, run back yet, but I'd like to very soon. Uh, Omaha funny bone, is incredible uh my home club is incredible helium and buffalo everyone it's one of the better helium clubs i haven't been to the philly one yet i will be but i imagine i mean i still will think buffalo's is the the best i've um, heard of the portland one as well the portland helium is electric in terms of like like i had such a fun show at that one that was insane Mm -hmm. so that one is great too so all the heliums are are pretty great um 
the uh, uh, Zanies in Nashville, Lucy runs like one of the best clubs in the country. It's like uh-huh. everyone, I mean, hell, people, a bunch of comics instead of going to Austin, move there just because of that club. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy. They're developing a whole. And what's funny is America. all the, uh, I mean, it's not funny at all, but it's like people, some people will say that, you know, oh, women don't get a fair shake in, in comedy today. And I think that was true in the past. Don't get me wrong, but I think it's getting more fair because all those clubs I named are booked and run by women. You know what I mean? And yeah. You look at the comedy store, same comedy thing. Comedy store. A lot, booked I by like, a woman. Yeah. Uh, the improv here in Hollywood is booked by a woman. All the improvs surrounding it are booked by a woman. Um, yeah. So, I mean, a bunch of clubs mm. in up and down the East Coast that are improvs that are uh, I mean, they're owned by the, or they're booked by that same woman too. That's kind so of interesting because like, I feel like sometimes mo- most of the, literally most of the clubs that I work, I feel like are booked by women. Yeah, but the, but like, I feel like culturally sometimes women can be the meanest to each other. Like everyone's like women. Oh sure, together, I mean these women, like, they're not doing it because they hate women. Right, it's clear they are one. They're doing it based off of like merit and who's fun. You know what I mean? They're like who yeah, sells tickets? It's and real, like who sells tickets? Really? Is the, I think it's pretty clear in, in comedy who. Who, like, yeah, it's just who you want at your club there's people that are going to sell out and there's people that you're taking chances on and it's like when it's a real business like that it's it's just who's funny i don't yeah you know, i um i've gotten some some slack on instagram before because we do this thing where people can it can message us a 60 second clip of them and then we'll post a new comedian uh try to do it every day uh just for okay. these people that have like smaller audiences or they're basically open micers is trying to get them and it's kind of like kill tony's concept but it's on instagram so it can happen right you're just posting clips yeah 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 and and i've gotten some people it was actually just one person that was reaching out and sent me these long dms about how it's been like 17 clips since i've featured a woman this that and the other <laughs> the people and, who keep the stats are hilarious yeah it's like, and it's like number one it's just the way that it's going it's just the yeah, math it's yeah not- it's just like people <laughs> sending me clips way more yeah. dudes do stand up like it's I don't just know what the math about. yeah that's what i was it was always yeah. like there's no women on this lineup it's like in, in buffalo you'd hear that or something like and you'd be like there's no women on the sign. I called the three and they weren't available. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> yeah. 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 I tried. <laughs> like, yeah. So it's just, it's just, you know, I don't think anyone, I would hope to think that everyone who is participating in like, and it's like, like that's the thing though. They, they think because they're like, well, then I'm a woman and I should be booked. And it's like, or my clip should be promoted. It's like, well, yeah, but like, or I mean, it's like, yeah, you are a woman, and you are a comic, but you're just not, it's, it's like, yeah. you, you want to know how many dudes I say no to or whatever. You know? Yeah, exactly. I, I, it's, I, I like the amount of clips I get sent to that Instagram. I'm filtering out clips based on only one thing is if I think that it's exactly. funny or not. It's funny, and the yeah. other thing is I'm kind of helping the people that I'm not posting in a way, because I'm like, I don't <laughs> That's think true. That- That's very nice of you. actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, so I don't know. I just to think that like, and also my page's success is also wrapped up in getting the best humor out there. So it's like, if this was funny, why would I, just because you're a woman, I'm like, that makes no sense at all to think that. But I think that it's a good, um, it can be used as a good excuse occasionally. Uh, no, I sure, sure. It's always an excuse, but but sometimes. It no, obviously there is just like everything else. It's not a black and white sort of uh, A and B situation. It's like, there's obviously like, outliers where that makes it true you know what i'm saying there are bookers who are assholes and there are people who are sexist in this but it's like it's not the pervading yeah uh it's not some conspiracy everyone's not in on it like against you yeah exactly all right well uh josh potter thank you so much for the time today before we go just wrap it up here um just for fun i would like to do a little bit let's let's do a bill's prediction for their record this year um maybe a playoff prediction as well if you if i assume that you will think that they make the playoffs and then i'd yeah. like to so i'll do um a bangles prediction maybe we can hold hold each other to the what do you mean uh what do you mean a uh playoff prediction like how far they'll go how far they'll go maybe a regular season record and then uh, <laughs> i mean this is already easy question i'm going to tell you my answer right now they're going to go 17 and 0 and they're going to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. I don't expect anything else. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that was the worst question. <laughs> what, else, what other answer could I even get? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I was like, what do you think I was going to say? And they're going to win the Super Bowl. I love that. Dude, a lot of, ta- a lot of talent in the AFC this year. Sure. No, yeah, no doubt. At quarterback. I, okay. Last, last thing. Was it, no, yeah, take it, was it just want. the best thing ever when the Chiefs traded Tyreek Hill? I mean, what? Well, no, they traded him to the Dolphins, which we played twice a year. So ultimately, it's a week in the Chiefs, but it strengthens someone who is in our her, enemy that is right division. next door. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, but I feel like they just I, have like, Tua still. So Tua, that's what I feel I'm like saying. Tua throws the ball slower than both those two receivers run him and uh Waddle. i forget the other guy's name Waddle. Yeah, they're Waddle, both so yeah. fast that they'll just run way past to a slow yeah. left arm throws oh he's and, winding uh, all the way back yeah yeah he's he's never going to get them the ball so I, it's almost like north korea where you're like they got the stuff to make the nuclear bomb but they're missing that one <laughs> part you know? yeah. yeah they're missing thank that God one they part that they'll never charge. figure out yeah yeah, yeah. if just, they you know they know they know they're missing that and just part, like north just korea the... figure it out. they're trying to like <laughs> yeah. dummy up a, a similar one but they don't have like the reactor yeah. like that we have we're like oh you'll never you don't have good scientists it's just there. like north korea the guy in charge is too short <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny that's why i didn't even feel like it was a threat him going to miami because i'm like oh. When I saw that as a person, not, I mean, I'm, I have stake in the Chiefs getting worse for the Bengals' sure. sake, but I was just kind of like, oh man, I, I liked seeing Mahomes and him play together. Like, I'm just kind of like, oh yeah. well, Tyreek Hill. I wonder how it will affect now. them for sure. I don't know how yeah. it will affect. I mean, Mahomes got, is just going to do like no look passes yeah. to someone else. Well, now. now they have Juju, who I think is the pussiest player, maybe athlete. Yeah, I, well, Juju, it's going to be weird because it's like this could be Patrick Mahomes. I feel like he has a terrible toxic surrounding him yeah even his, though he might be a nice yeah. guy he's got these like this his wake brother of, his he needs wife to, he, if he wisens up he'll become like aaron Rodgers, where he just cuts everyone off. Like, <laughs> exactly yeah people but, give but aaron bringing, Rodgers shit for that it's like well, yeah. look at patrick mahomes dude. he's a robot patrick yeah. mahomes needs to do that but uh if he gets juju smith schuster out there juju smith schuster and his brother are going to start doing tiktoks together oh my it's going to create the most like yeah epic perfect yeah. storm of it's just gonna be the cringiest games. team like you don't even and i don't see that team being the super bowl champs no <laughs> I, don't, I don't see anyone being intimidated by juju and the the quarterback's brother like yeah yeah the tiktok around on the sideline yeah, yeah the TikTok and Mahomes thing. looks like a tiktok guy yeah he does that's why i'm so surprised he's got that floppy that he's hair not, yeah he's got some his weird voice his voice is so strange his kermit the frog just kind of like weird I just thought of this, but what if he's encouraging his brother? You're like, that's good, man. <laughs> I love it. Because he's it's really also good so bland. Yeah, yeah, he's just also such a dork. Or he wishes that he wants to be a TikTok star and, he's, and he just wishes they didn't have to play quarterback for yeah. <laughs> half a billion dollars. I can't get a vibe on him at all, Patrick. I can't Mahomes. either. But he, it's cool that he owns a little bit of the Royals. And yes, that is cool. Like if, he, I, if I made that huge check that generational wealth like if i'm josh allen i'm buying a baseball team too you know what i mean like that's what i've always said if i won the lottery or something like i want to own a sports team me too for sure but i don't think i'd pick baseball personally no i get it the other ones are more expensive though that's true too all right well anyway that was a a great uh nfl preview thank you (laughs) again for being here josh potter um any socials or upcoming this will come out wednesday if you have any uh, dates coming up or podcasts or anything that you want to plug uh, uh yeah. tomorrow i'll be in indianapolis uh uh for uh one show and then i'm gonna be oh that's it for now because i took yeah because that philly date that i was supposed to be in philadelphia on june 2nd but it's now august 25th and uh i'll be in san diego in july all of it's up on my instagram at josh underscore potter and on twitter at J underscore Potter. Awesome. There you have it. Josh Potter. Thank you, Thank you again. No problem, dude.